Okay, good afternoon everyone. It is now 2.57. We're going to start the session at exactly uh, 3 p.m. But uh, meanwhile, uh, as some have already done, may we request uh, the participants to kindly please type in the chat box the school you come from, the city or province you are following us from. Um, we are expected to be as many as yesterday. Yesterday, there were 75 of us. Monday, there were 105 of us. And I think tomorrow is going to be another very big day uh, with the biggest number of participants. And so before we actually start, it's now 2.58. We will begin in exactly a minute and a half. May we request you to type in the chat box the um, school and city or province you are following us from. We have friends from Santo Nino High School of uh, Gitagum. They've been with us since day one. From um, Dumaguete, St. Paul University, Dumaguete. Hello, thank you for joining us. Welcome. From uh, Bayambang, Pangasinan, St. Vincent's Catholic School of uh, Bayambang, or Bistondo Catholic School uh, from Pangasinan. From Mary Help of Christians Catholic School, uh, Pangasinan. And then we also have from Bangkal High School, welcome from Makati. And then we have St. Charles Academy, San Carlos City, Pangasinan. Thank you for joining us. Uh, St. Columban College, St. Columban's College, Lingayan, Jesus the Nazarene Academy of Bin Malay. They've been with us also since uh, Monday. Of course, from Assumption College, Makati, hello, welcome. St. Matthew College, San Mateo Rizal, thank you for joining us. St. Paul College, uh, Pasig, uh, St. Paul University of Quezon City, South Crest School, Muntinlupa City. Hello, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. St. Anthony Parish School, Mantikao, from Davao City. Hello, San Jacinto Catholic School, from San Jacinto, Pangasinan. St. Paul Academy, Goa, Camarina Sur. Um, great, thank you. Malasiki Catholic School, from Pangasinan. I was there in your school a few years ago. I hope I'll be able to go back. One day, St. Paul University, San Miguel, hello, St. John, Dagupan City, St. Pedro Poveda, of course, they've been with us also since day one. Um, fantastic. Okay, well, it's 3 p.m. I'm going to, uh, of course, Balete Family Farm School, hello, from Batangas, welcome. From uh, Mapandan Catholic School, Pangasinan, St. John's Cathedral School of Dagupan, Santo Tomas Catholic School, uh, Mangaldan, Pangasinan, from Candon City, St. Joseph's Institute. Fantastic. Santo Nino High School of Gitagum. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And um, well, it's 3 p.m. And as we always do, we begin on time. And so I'd like to invite you uh, as a way of starting our session today um, to pray and to entrust our teaching efforts to our Lord. Here is a prayer from uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola, prayer for generosity. Okay, well, that's a way of uh, going to our Lord to ask him to help us be generous. And I need you to be generous because as you're going to see today, there are so many strategies we can be doing in order to form the character of our students, regardless of what subject you're handling, regardless of whatever subject that is entrusted to you. Um, it's a mindset, and that's why I want to begin by spending time uh, driving home the point of teaching for character, okay? Uh, if you've attended any of our seminars in the past, I'm sure you would have heard me say this. We teachers are not just hired to cover the curriculum. Okay? Ang success ng isang teacher is not just to be able to say at the end of the year, ang galing kong teacher, natapos ko yung curriculum. <laughs> ang galing kong teacher, natapos ko yung textbook. Umabot kami sa last chapter. That's important. 
but that is not the only thing we want to be able to do as teachers. If you are to be a good educator, our job is to be able to say at the end of the year, ang galing kong teacher, I made a difference in the lives of my students. Ang galing kong teacher, my students are better human beings because I made a difference in their life. Well, many of you come from Catholic schools and so I'd like to invite you to join me as our way of uh, beginning this uh, afternoon session, running to St. Joseph and asking him to help us be the best teachers we can possibly be because he is the teacher of the master teacher. If you were with us in the January, 1 to, uh, January 4 to 8 seminar, we repeatedly talked about St. Joseph, the need to run to him, especially this year when we are celebrating uh, his year. The, it has been declared as the year of St. Joseph. And so I want us to begin asking the master teacher, please help us to be the best teachers we can possibly be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh, blessed Saint Joseph, guardian of the child Jesus, we pray that you will help us in our daily troubles and tribulations as we try to pass on to our students all the teachings that they need to be able to succeed in their chosen professions. Help us to teach and help them to learn. Guide us all as you guided your most holy son, Jesus. Obtain for us the graces we need not only to teach and to learn, but to stay on the path shown by the light of Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, you know, the reason why we need to go to St. Joseph is because one of the titles he is given is the terror of demons. You see, St. Joseph is the terror of demons. The whole hell trembles in fear. That's how powerful St. Joseph is. And I'm going to show you the demons that are uh, troubling our young people, our students, the, especially the teenagers inside your classroom. And we need St. Joseph now more than ever. For those of you who are first time to attend my seminar, I am Emmanuel Man Rentoy. I'm a graduate of the University of Santo Tomas with a double degree in journalism, literature, and an MA in creative writing. And I have a PhD in literature. And I founded a school in Iloilo City. It's an all boys school called Paref Westbridge School. It's now one of the top schools in Region 6. And um, I served as principal of intermediate school of South Ridge School in Alabang, and also vice principal of high school and the religion department chair. So many of the things I'm going to share with you, I learned in my 34 years as a teacher. I am on my 34th year inside the classroom. I have not left the classroom, even if I moved to Sri Lanka last year, but I'm back here in Manila because of the pandemic. But uh, I never left the classroom. I have continued teaching. And in the last 11 years, um, I brought to the Philippines CEP Philippines, which is an affiliate of CEP Character Education Partnership, based in the um, in Washington University, uh, Washington DC, USA, and I've also been serving as the executive director of the Center for the Fourth and Fifth Hours Asia, which is uh, an affiliate of Center for the Fourth and Fifth Hours based in the State University of New York. And one of the things I've been doing the past years, the past 11 years, is I bring world experts to the Philippines to hold various character formation seminars, um, like Dr. Hal Urban and Fred Jones, the authority in um, motivation. Hal Urban, I'm going to be talking about some of his strategies later on. I also brought to Manila Dr. Harry K. Wong, the author of First Days of School, which is the only classroom management book you will ever need. And that's why tomorrow when I talk about classroom management, better classroom management, 
how to solve that discipline problem, I will be using him, his seminar as my main basis for the lecture. And uh, I also brought to the Philippines the expert on understanding the digital generation, Ian Jukes. And another thing I've been doing is organizing chastity conference, conferences with some of the top speakers in the world on chastity, purity, modesty. This is the biggest we had with uh, Chris Stefanik and Leia Darrow, and there were 15,000 young people who came to World Trade Center to attend that uh, session. And uh, I already brought to the Philippines for four times uh, Jason Everett, who is really the world expert on purity, chastity, modesty. And well, uh, that's what I've been doing, championing character formation because um, because it's the crisis we are seeing in the world today okay there, there is a crisis in character and that's why well i i already want to invite you um we are going to bring the uh, dr michelle borba author of 27 best-selling books on character formation and her latest book is Thrivers, um, The Secrets to Why Some Kids Succeed Even in These Troubled Times. So for two days, she's going to talk about um, raising mentally healthy kids during troubled times. Okay, so I hope you uh, watch out for that because it's, it promises to be a fantastic presentation. She's going to be very, very practical and she's going to share a lot of ideas with teachers and parents on how we can raise mentally healthy kids during these troubled times, during this pandemic, during this uh, time when there is crisis in the world today. So today our topic is this, urgency of character formation strategies and proven methods. I am going to share with you many strategies from experts and I want you to take note of those strategies because after this um, time that we're together this afternoon, I think your problem is where to begin. With us, so many ideas, your concern is uh, which one should I begin in? So I suggest you take notes uh, take note of all the strategies and methods I will be sharing with you so that um, even after this seminar, you can continue reviewing them and then implementing some of them as you go through the rest of the school year and as you prepare for another school year. But first things first, we need to thank you, teachers, because kahit ganito na ang sitwasyon, no? pandemic, online classes. I mean, this is not what we were trained to do. But you continue to teach. You choose to continue teaching. And so your frontliners now, we are all like frontliners during this pandemic. And for this, if you have not been thanked yet by your um, co-teachers, your students, the parents of your teachers, well, let me be the one to extend to you our sincerest gratitude for you continue to teach even if even if kahit na nakikita natin ang mga kabataan ngayon ibang iba na i mean really you know this the young people today are totally different uh, different attitude different mindsets different uh, well one is because they live in a unique environment where we know this, ang mga estudyante ninyo, they don't know a world without cell phone anymore. They don't know a world without computer. Kaya tayo, binibigay pa lang natin yung assignment sa mga bata. Iniisip na nila yan. I-google ko yan mamaya. Hahanapin ko yan sa YouTube mamaya. Hahanapin ko yan sa Google. That's the mindset now. It's totally different from how you and I were when we were in school. Sometimes this is the title I give to this presentation, 
raising children of character in a wired world. It's a, it's a totally different environment. Look at the kids growing up today. That is the kind of students you have. These children today learn how to use the gadgets even before they learn how to walk and talk. I mean, really, hindi pa sila marunong magsalita gaya ng batang yon. But he knows how to use the gadget. He knows how to use the tablet. He knows how to use the cell phone. Their life practically revolves around technology. And you have kids today whose level of happiness is dependent on how strong the Wi-Fi connection is. Diba? Pag malakas ang Wi-Fi, uy, napakasaya, napaka uh, bibong-bibo. Pero pagka nawala ang Wi-Fi, aba, depressed, galit sa mundo, mainit ang, mainit ang ulo, uh, irritable. Ayan. Uh, that's the kind of world that we are living in. And think about it, it's not been 20 years, really, since the internet took over lifestyles. It's not even 20 years that we've had Facebook and YouTube. How are things going to be 10 years from now? We don't know. In fact, 15 years ago, 15 years ago, I did not imagine that everyone would have cell phones. I mean, that cell phone is going to be like a, the most normal thing to have. Everyone can have a cell phone or computer 20 years ago 30 years ago yung computer na yan para lang sa mga mayayaman di ba pero ngayon parang aba kahit sa ordinaryo yung bahay in an ordinary family you normally would have a computer a laptop sometimes every one of them every single one in the household would have what would life be like 10 15 years from now we cannot imagine yet Tama si David Warlick, for the first time, we adults, parents, teachers, are preparing these young people for a future na hindi pa natin ma-imagine. We don't know how the world exactly will look like 20 years from now. And yet, that is what we are preparing the young people for. Sabi nga ng isang expert, teachers, don't teach your students the way your teacher taught you 20 years ago. Don't teach your students the way your teacher 20 years ago taught you. Because otherwise, you are preparing your students for 1990s. <laughs> the, we are preparing them for the 2020s, 2030s. And what is the world going to be like at that time? We are not sure yet. The 21st century is not coming. It is here. This is it. This is what we are preparing the young people for. And yet, many of us cannot yet even fully imagine what it's like, what it's going to be like. But here's the good news. I'm sure some of you have seen this video. That is the kind of students we have. That is actually the good news. The good news is kahit nag na ang mundo, the young people continue learning in the same way to do the example of the adults. I mean, where do you think that kid learned yung mga hand gestures na ganyan, yung mga paganyang-ganyan with the telephone? Of course, yeah, she saw it in mom or dad, the, even the way of talking. That is actually good news for us because even if mindset has changed, environment has changed, generation has changed, the young people today continue to learn in the same way, to do the example of the young people, uh, of the adults rather, to do the example of the, of the older people. And that's us. The, the young people can continue learning values, virtues, good things. But, sabi ng research, empathy is at its lowest right now in the history of mankind. In the history of recorded mankind, um, where we have literature, 
ang empathy ngayon ng mga kabataan is at its lowest and pride is at its highest ever in the history of mankind. Self-centeredness, vanity at their highest peak. So, and then, um, ang kalaban natin dito yung media, radio, television, YouTube, social media, Facebook, in Instagram, Twitter. Um, we are losing to the internet. Um, the internet has a certain culture of hatred, culture of bashing, of uh, uh, ranting, of uh, putting down. I mean, and then the social media is fostering, fostering a lot of self-centeredness. You know this, I always talk about this. If you've been with us in any of the past seminars, you would have heard me say this. Um, itong mindset of uh, taking a picture of yourself as soon as you wake up so that you let the world know how you woke up, that they woke up like this. Or letting the world know kung ano ang outfit of the day mo. Or taking a picture of your lunch, of your dinner, of your snacks, so that you can let the world know uh, this is now what I'm eating. I mean, that's a lot of self-centeredness. And this is the reason why, this is the reason why for the last 11 years, aside from teaching in schools, I have been devoting my life to pushing character formation. Here are the principles I have, which I hope you share with me so that it will make a lot of sense why we need to teach for character. Why we have to consider character formation as something very urgent. Number one, you and I as teachers, we are all in charge of character formation. This is not just for the values education teacher, for the guidance educator, guidance counselor, for the religion teacher. No, every single one of us teachers should be concerned about forming character. It's not just another subject. Some of us, tuwan-tuwa tayo kasi nag announce ang Malacanang, ang DepEd, si Mayor Isko, gusto nilang ibalik ang GMRC. Nice, fine, okay. But GMRC is not just another subject. Character formation is not just another subject. Um, manners, right conduct, that's not just another subject. It's what's every good teacher it's what every good teacher tries to transmit to the young people. Because education is not just covering of the curriculum. It is about raising young people to become good, not just smart, but especially also good. And there is no other better way to teach character than to do the powerful example of our life, to do the power of our example. So. My dear fellow teachers, sabi ng title, strategies and proven methods. I'm giving you already strategy number one. <laughs> How can you teach character? To do our example. When we come to class every single day, punctually, on time, that's teaching them. Punctuality, professionalism, character. When we take a control of our um, passion, that we don't resort to shouting, screaming, yelling, uh, insulting students or sarcasm. When we don't resort to these things, we are teaching them kindness. We are teaching them respect to do the example of our life. And there is no other better way. In fact, the only effective way to teach character is to do the example of our life. And this is the reason why you and I, my dear fellow teachers, we are the most important teaching tool for our students. It's not the internet. It's not the Wi-Fi. It's not the blackboard. It's not the textbook. Minsan, ano, isang buong taon nag-debate nag, uh, ang mga teachers kung ano ang textbook na gagamitin. Fine, but that is not the most important teaching tool. The most important teaching tool is the teacher himself, herself, his life her life, the way he or she reacts to situations. 
That's why I never fail to mention this. Teachers, number one, do not ever, ever resort to foul language or bad words. Do not ever resort to cursing, to profanities, because when we do, we lose our effectiveness as character formation agents. We lose our um, effectivity, uh, our reputation plummets. Number two, we teachers, I never fail to mention when I'm talking to teachers, we teachers, wala tayong karapatang magalit sa mga estudyante. Pag late sila pumasok ng classroom, late magbigay ng assignment, late magbigay ng homework, kung ikaw mismo ma'am, late ka pumasok ng class, late ka magbigay ng grades, late ka magbalik ng test papers. In other words, in other words, we cannot demand from our students something we do not first show by our example. We are the most important teaching tool inside the classroom. And then finally, number three, we have administrators here. And well, maybe sorry, but no sorry. And I'm not sorry to tell you, your school is only as good as your teachers in the end. Are your teachers teachers of character? They form character. They mold minds. They are very good example. They are role models. Your school is a fantastic fantastic school. Do you have teachers who criticize the administration, who criticize the school, who backbite? Your school is a lousy school. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say, <laughs> because that's how it is. Your school, in the end, is only as good as your teachers. So, my dear fellow teachers, this seminar today is really nothing else but an invitation to all of you. The seminar today, as well as last Monday, yesterday, and tomorrow and Friday, these are nothing else but a, an invitation to all of you. Let us be the best teachers we can possibly be. Kasi kailangan tayo ng mga sudyante, and I'm going to go to do that now. Why character formation is urgent. And number two, because teaching is such an important job. We cannot afford to fail in this task. You know? If, um, di ba, pagka ang isang lamesa, mag, pangit ang pagkagawa, o kaya sira, nasira ang lamesa, madaling sabihin, sino bang gumawa yan? Gumawa niyan, ibalik nga yan sa karpintero, ipaayos. Ibalik, ibalik. Ang silya, pagsira, it's very easy to say. Ibalik nga yan dun sa supplier. Pero pag ang isang bata, lumaking masamang tao, <laughs> immoral, Sinungaling, corrupt, ay hindi mo pwedeng sabihin sino ba ang grade 4 values teacher niyan. Ibalik, ibalik sa eskwelahan. <laughs> sino ba ang teachers niyan ng kanyang, nung bata pa yan? Ibalik. We cannot. So the message is, we only have this one shot. We cannot afford to fail in this task. We've got to do it well because the young people are counting on us. Because... The consequences of failing to become good teachers, the consequences are great, are great. And this may be the reason why we are seeing corrupt politicians today. Sino bang nagturo dyan ng values, ng concern for the poor, ng honesty, uprightness, goodness? I'm going to share with you many strategies later so that the young people will develop honesty, uprightness, morals. That, that's what we talked about a few weeks ago when we, did, when we tackled teach like Jesus. Okay, there is a crisis. The reason why the title of the talk is Urgency of Character Formation is because, look, ito ang mga kabataang lumalaki ngayon and look at the challenges they are facing. <clears throat> Addiction to video games. Di ba? Totoo yan. In fact, it's not just addiction to video games, addiction to gadget, addiction to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. I mean, Laika, tinasukan pa ng mga bago. Uh, this is the kind of young people growing up today. Their life is so immersed in technology. Video games is very powerful. Violence in media. Yung bang... Uh, one movie 
um, one and a half hours and they can hear um, profanities, uh, they can see murder, assault, rape uh, happening. Uh, you know, one of the most popular television series among the young people, Game of Thrones. Ayan. Game of Thrones, di ba? Millions of people watch that the TV series. It's on Netflix. It's available now. And you, almost every, every episode, there is murder, there is assault, there is killing, there is homicide, there is rape, there is incest. There is, that's the kind of um, media young people are immersed in. And then, nandiyan ang pornography. We will talk more a lot about that later. And then, materialism and hedonism. O nga naman, kasi they can be spending the whole day in front of the screen, television screen, computer screen, uh, cell phone screen, internet screen, and um, hours of television means hours and hours of commercials, advertisements. Na ang mensahe always is simply, uh, just do it, um, enjoy, please yourself, drink, hedonism, materialism, buy, upgrade, don't settle for uh, iPhone 6, you have to go for iPhone 12. That's the mindset that is, and then hindi pa yan. Here are more challenges na hinaharap ng mga kabataang lumalaki ngayon. Religious indifference. It's becoming a problem. You have more and more young people. Batang bata pa lang. Sasabihin na nila, I am an atheist. I don't believe in God. I love God but I don't love religion. May mga ganyan. But they, they just read it in the internet. They just saw it in... Uh, Twitter, in Facebook, somebody posted it and they start owning it. Divorce, alcoholism, softness, moral relativism, fake heroes na naglipa na sa uh, GMA, ABS-CBN, Star Cinema, sa, and then drug addiction. These are all crises young people are facing. And many of them, hindi natin problema nung bata tayo. I mean, I'm talking for uh, people my age, okay? <laughs> when I was younger, we didn't have problems of these things. Today, the young people have to contend with this. Kaya ang tawag ko sa kanila, assault, assault on today's children. And then you have mindsets of young people, Filipinos, shaped by social media. We are known as the social media capital of the world. Yan. A lot of hours spent in Facebook, in Twitter, in Instagram, in TikTok now. Um, I mean, really, you can have young people um, spending the whole day uh, preparing for those TikTok dance um, presentations, dance uh, uh, videos, and actually recording them. So, uh, this is the world. And then, the young people are growing up in a culture, in an environment, in an atmosphere that is highly sexualized. Ano ibig sabihin ng highly sexualized culture? Sex in movies, sex in TV shows, sex in MTVs, uh, salacious dancing, indecent dancing, um, billboards, magazines, websites. Twitter, which does not have um, censorship uh, of sorts, na, uh, people post even triple X videos there. Apps that young people um, can use to access pornography. Even a grade one kid can suddenly be subjected to the most gruesome um, pornographic images. And all these, all these are contributing to the crisis in the digital generation. At this point, I pause and say, Aba, oo nga, urgent nga ang character formation. Eh bakit all the time, ang principal namin, ang pinag-uusapan lang, uh, upgrading math, upgrading science, upgrading the computer room, uh, investing on high-speed fiber, optic internet 
nice. If your school can afford these things, fantastic. But given the crisis we are seeing in society, shouldn't we be talking more about what are the strategies that we can use to form empathy, to form purity, to protect and safeguard the core values of the school? Shouldn't we be spending more hours in training the teachers on how to, how to teach for character? Well, if your principal sent you to this seminar and you are not a religion teacher or a values teacher or a guidance counselor, please thank your principal for me because they understand what it means to be a good educator. You know what I usually experience is I get invited to speak in a school about character. Tapos ang papa-attend ng principal are only the religion teachers, values teachers, guidance educators. Tapos tatanungin ko, teka, paano yung science, math, and English teacher? They too should teach for character. They too are concerned, should be concerned about forming the character of the young people entrusted to them. So this is a task for all of us teachers, not just the values teachers, the guidance counselor, especially because may crisis. I already mentioned some of those crises. Digital addiction, it's a real thing, you know. Lalo ngayon, pandemic, uh, ang hirap na, no? Ang away sa bahay many times, pinagmugula ng away many times is, uh, kanina ka pa dyan sa internet, Kanina ka pa sa computer, ali ka na nga dita, um, wala ka nang ginawa kundi mag-computer. Anong sasabihin ng bata? Eh, meron kaming online class, meron kaming uh, online assignment. Meron ka... Ngayon, ang hirap na no? kasi uh, totoo nga naman, eh, online na ang klase. Eh. So, um, nagkaroon ng uh, blurring of the distinction between uh, naglalaro na kaya siya, nagsaserve lang kaya, o talagang academics ang kanyang inaatupag. Digital addiction has become a um, bigger problem now that we are all working from home. Now that we are all um, doing classes online. And then, nabanggit natin kanina, the digital lifestyle is fostering very powerfully, very strongly, self-centeredness and vanity. The young people are being manipulated by the environment to, to be self-centered and vain, to let the world know how they feel. I mean, diba, if you go to Facebook, minsan you cringe. Kailangan niya ba talagang, kailang, kailangan niya ba talagang sabihin sa buong mundo, feeling blessed, feeling happy, feeling angry, feeling upset. I mean, do you really need to let the world know about how you feel, about what you think. Um, people post uh, if they like this movie or not. Ang iniisip mo, I mean, sino ka para magsabi sa amin na you like it or you don't like it. Do you really need to know what your opinion is about everything? But that's the environment they're living in. The young people especially are living in. They are being manipulated by environment to be self-centered, to be vain, to let the world know about their feelings like as if they are the center of the universe. And then, nung bata ako, as a, as a teacher, uh, when I started teaching in 1987, I didn't need to know anything about depression. <laughs> Pero today, we need to equip teachers how to detect among our students who may be going through depression, who may be entertaining suicidal thoughts, who may be uh, nursing um, mental sickness. Now we need to be e equipped about these things. Wala naman ito nung bata tayo. Ah. Wala naman itong ADD, ADHD. Um, wala yun. And then we didn't have to deal with teenage suicide. And yet today, parabang, nako, we need to train our teachers on how to go about helping. If a student goes to you, comes to you, and tells you, Mom, sir, 
gusto ko nang magpakamatay. You cannot just say, stop thinking about that. Doon ka nga, keep quiet. We cannot. We need to know how to go about helping a, a teenager, a high school student who may be going through things like that. And I'm talking about the Philippines. I'm not just talking about the U.S. where you have 11, 11 every day committing suicide among teenagers. Teen suicide is becoming one of the leading causes of death. I mean, it's absurd. It is absurd. There is something wrong happening. We are, we are becoming more and more convinced about Ay, oo nga, urgent nga ang character formation, ano? Nandiyan ang teen pregnancy. You know, one day I was invited to speak in Concepcion, Iloilo. Three hours away from downtown Iloilo. Where walang mall. Wala pang mall dun sa Concepcion. Uh, the only parang uh, hip place is 7-Eleven. Aba, may 7-Eleven. Parang doon ang gustong tambayan ng mga teenagers. Ano? Para bang, hey guys, mamaya ah, sa 7-Eleven. <laughs> Parang ganun lang ka-complicated ang kanilang social life. Pero, three days, ah, five days ako doon, nagbigay ng seminar to all the teachers in college and then to all the teachers of the public schools there. Lumapit sa akin yung isang teacher. Sir, alam nyo dito, dito sa aming bayan, every year, three to five students drop out Three to five students drop out because they get pregnant. I mean, come to think of it, ba, paano, paano mangyayari yun? Eh, 7-Eleven na nga lang ang tambayan ng mga batang ito. <laughs> It's happening everywhere. It's a crisis. I find this article absurd in many ways. Population Commission clarifies. The head of the Commission on Population Development, PopCom, clarified on Friday that about 40 to 50 Filipino children aged 10 to 14 years old give birth every week, not every year, as previously reported. Every week, 40 to 50 teenagers between the age of 10 and 14 give birth. This is crisis level. Tapos, ang primo problema natin is... Uh, Math upgrade, science upgrade, uh, English uh, proficiency. Okay, okay, those are important. But shouldn't we be first, hey, look at what is happening among the teenagers. What is happening to their values, to their character, to their morals. This is more crisis. And hopefully, they don't resort to abortion. Itong mga teenage pregnancies. Nagpatulong sa akin itong Catholic school two years ago. Sir, tulungan nyo naman kami. Meron kaming kasing isang grade 11 student na nabuntis. Gave birth last December. And you know, teachers never even realized she was pregnant. Huh, even worse, you know, the parents never even realized she was pregnant. They only found out she was pregnant because... One day in December, they had to rush her to the hospital. She had to give birth. This is the kind of young people we are dealing with. We need to form their character. We need to form their morals. And then there's a problem of pornography, which is eroding morals of many young people. To sabi ng report ng Pornhub, Filipinos ranked number one in spending most time on site number of hours spent in Pornhub, one of the top pornographic uh, websites. And this is 2018. I think 2019, we were still number one for the sixth year in a row. Number one ang Pilipinas in terms of hours spent online in Pornhub. The Philippines is in top 10 of countries with most searches for coronavirus on Pornhub. I mean, it's absurd. This is um, crisis level. And that's why we need to go to St. Joseph. Tama si Pope Francis, kailangan na natin ang father of the family. You know, di ba, pag, nagka, pag nagkakagulo na ang bahay, sino ang papasok para to put everything in order? The tatay, the dad will discipline everyone. 
well, I invite you to run to him now to help us. St. Joseph, please fix things up for us. This is crisis level. O oh, glorious St. Joseph, foster father of our Lord, guardian and teacher of the young Jesus, help us as we teach our children to grow in the love and truth of Jesus. Guide us so that we will lead them in the right path to acknowledge the truth that Jesus teaches us. Amen. So, may crisis, ano? Di ba may ganito kayang estudyante? Batang-bata pa, no? Pero ang cellphone niya, mas maganda kesa sa cellphone mo. <laughs> mas sophisticated. Sa cellphone niya, pwede siya mag-surf, manood ng movies, gumawa ng video, sariling videos niya. Now, when I see a kid like this, with his own sophisticated cell phone, you know, I feel a bit irritated because naaalala ko, for me to be able to buy my own first Nokia 3210, aba, pinaghirapan ko yun. Pinag-ipunan ko from my salary. Here's a kid who has no salary, who did not even skip lunch para lang magkaroon ng cell phone. He did not suffer and uh, sacrifice to be able to have that cell phone. And you know what happens? The kids today develop what we call a sense of entitlement. Sense of entitlement. When they are able to get things with little effort, with hardly any sacrifice on their part. Kaya, parents among you, di ba? Lumapit ang anak nyo sa inyo, nagsabi, Tay, tay. Kailangan ko na ng cellphone. Ako na lang ang wala sa klase. Yan. Di ba? Entitled, ano? Kung magsalita, para bang, I deserve it. I have to have it. Lahat ng classmates ko meron ng internet sa bahay. We need to have it. Tay, kailangan high-speed internet, ha? I need it for my project, my homework, my online classes. Yan. Ikaw naman, sasabihin mo, tumahimik ka, iho, grade 1 ka pa lang dyan. Assignment, homework, internet, internet. But, but that's how kids are nowadays. They develop a certain uh, sense of entitlement. Parang ang feeling nila, I deserve it. I have to have it. That is the kind of mindset the world is manipulating among the young people to develop sense of entitlement. But mind you, let me just remind you, dear fellow teachers, Technology is here to stay. That is it. Hindi na ito mawawala. It's not about confiscating the gadget. <laughs> it's not about cutting the internet. They need it. That's just part of life already. What we need to do is to make sure this kid grows up in control of technology and not the other way around. That he will have self-control. That he will have temperance that he will have right priorities, that he will have values, na pag online siya, he will only use it for the good, or she will only use the internet for the good. That's our duty. That's our job. Because technology is here to stay. That gadget is not going to disappear. It's just going to become brighter, more colorful, cheaper, more accessible, thinner, more powerful, but it's not going to disappear. It's here to stay. And technology designers are just coming out with more and more gadgets for younger and younger kids. Diba? Kaya sabi nga ng research, 30% of the kids start using a gadget while still in diapers. I repeat, think about it. 30% of the kids today start using a gadget while they are still in diapers. 30%, one third of them. Abay, baka sa susunod yan, hindi pa nga pinapanganak. We manipulate them already to be technocentric, to be dependent on technology, to, to make their life revolve around technology. So, that is a problem the digital lifestyle, the self-centeredness, the addiction to gadgets, these are all uh, what we are seeing among the young people today. There is what we call the pageantry of vanity. 
that is happening. Okay? Selfie, going live in Facebook and waiting for people to uh, tune in, waiting for people to comment, uh, Ate, pa-shout out naman. Kuya, pa-shout out naman. Uh, ano, iniisip mo, anong magagawa ng shout out, shout out na yan? <laughs> um, or some people equating, equating importance of the person, value or dignity of the person on the number of followers and likes. Kaya min minsan may ganyan kang bata, ano? Depressed kasi yung pinost niyang picture niya, tatlo lang ang nag-like. Samantalang yung kaibigan niya, ang pangit-pangit ng mukha niya, ang pangit ng picture na pinost niya, aba 500 likes na and then they feel something's wrong with me people don't like me people don't um, no that has nothing to do with your dignity with your personhood you are a son of god a daughter of god and that, regardless of how many likes you have or how many followers you have in tiktok in facebook in twitter or instagram that's not and yet, that's the kind of world the young people are living in. Crowdsourcing, ano, magpo-post and asking everyone, hey guys, anyone uh, knows where I can get uh, the latest uh, picture of uh, this uh, rapper from US? I mean, the, or IMO, in my opinion. Or, as we mentioned earlier, feelings. I mean, do you really need to let the world know how you feel today? Um, maybe it's not important. So then, these are all bringing about a crisis. Okay? At this point, if you still do not agree with me <laughs> na, na character formation is the most urgent thing we teachers are supposed to be attending to, I, I don't know what will make you accept it. Well, maybe I'll share with you one more reason why more than ever, character is urgent. Character formation is urgent. I'm sure you have come across this quotation. If kids come to us from strong, healthy, functioning families, napakadali ng trabaho natin as teachers. But if they do not come to us from strong, healthy, functioning families, our job has become far more important than ever. And you know it. Marami kang estudyante ngayon. You have more and more students coming inside your classroom and they come from broken families. And they come from families where the father is absent or the mother is absent. Maybe hindi naghiwalay, but simply the mother is in Dubai, the father is in Saudi, di ba? 11 million Filipinos working abroad. And so the young person may not be learning love at home, may not be learning the usual values we learn from our parents at home. Kasi nga absent ang parents. And therefore, they enter our classroom and they're not looking for math or science or English or history, social studies. They are looking for love. They are looking for answers to the ultimate questions in life. Why am I in this world? What is the purpose of life? What is love? The, yun ang kanilang hinahanap. Hindi yung division, subtraction, addition, multiplication, spelling, and grammar, and syntax. More, the, more important than those, they are looking for answers to questions, the big questions of life. And they need it from you, ma'am, sir. They need it from us. So, let's teach the great character strengths. By our example by our direction, by our verbal explanations. And then, let's learn strategies on how to teach for character. Okay? And I'm going to start now. Ten tips for raising moral kids. And these are ten tips from Dr. Michelle Borba. Here already are some methods on how we can make sure itong batang nasa classroom mo ngayon will not be uh, will not fall into addiction to pornography will not abuse women when he grows up will not be a corrupt politician 
will not be a thief stealing money from the government, from the taxpayer's money, and, but that he will be upright and moral. Let's start with number one. Let's commit to it. May this seminar be a strong reason for all of us here, all the 90 of us inside this Zoom room now. Let's commit ourselves. Let us make sure that the students entrusted to our care, every single one of them will grow up to be moral because research says parents who feel strongly about their children turning out morally usually succeed because they committed themselves to that effort. That same research also says teachers who feel strongly about their students turning out morally usually succeed because they committed themselves to that effort. Let's commit ourselves to it. Because if you really want to, to raise a moral child, then make a personal commitment to raise one and don't stop until he does you know we have to change our mindset we come inside the classroom whether it is face to face someday we will be back inside the classroom or even just in the zoom room or google meet classroom everyone every student every single student that we have there we commit ourselves to see them grow up to be good people, not just smart, but especially good. Sabi nila, that is the greatest legacy parents can leave behind their children. Some of you here are parents. I want you to have that clear in your mind. The greatest legacy parents can leave behind their children is a strong conviction that I have to be a good person. Pag napalaki ninyo ang inyong anak, with that strong conviction na kailangan maging mabuti akong tao kasi yun ang tinu tinuro ng nanay ko, ng tatay ko, you're a good parent, you're a successful parent. That's the greatest legacy you can leave behind your children. A strong conviction that I have to be a good human being. Number two, and this is not the first time we're mentioning it, strong moral example. From our example, the young people should learn kindness, respect. They will learn it in the way we treat them with respect, in the way we treat them with kindness. You want them to learn self-control? Show them. Show them how you react when one day, sabihin mo sa class, class, pass the assignments. Tapos kalahate hindi nag-submit. Kalahate hindi nakapag-submit. How you react at that moment is a moral example. Are you going to shout? You're going to scream? You're going to yell? Or you're going to be understanding and then you're going to be demanding but giving them another chance maybe because there were just real problems that happened. Maybe Smart and Globe really had failure in, in signals the past few days of the typhoon. <laughs> so, but at that moment, your reaction how you're going to react is a form of teaching them respect, kindness, self-control, and how to have, how to continue having high moral standards, high standards, but at the same time being demanding. Siyempre stricto pag nagtuturo. Mataray mo kani mami. Dapat ang upo mo parate maayos. Pag nakita ka po niyang hindi nakikinig sa kanya, titigil po siya magturo. Ako ay isang guro sa Makati High School. Itinuturo ko biology, physics, chemistry, and general science. Alas 4 na ako gumigising. Kailangan mo talagang mag-alat ng 4 hours kasi malayo nga yung biyahe. pagagalitan ka niya. Pero after the day, if you say sorry to her, she will accept it. Hindi po siya yung tipo teacher lang eh. Kasi naging nanay din namin siya, best friend, kaibigan. So ganun po yung banding namin. Si Mrs. Santiago nagsasalita yan sa amin na kung anong gusto niyo paglaki, mag-aral kayo mabuti, mag-ihing kayo. Wala nga po akong 
Ma'am, tapos siya. Parang pinaramdam niya po sa akin na huwag kang susuko kasi nandun naman po siya para gabayan ako. Yung father ko po, namatay na po siya. Si Mrs. Santiago, tinutulungan niya po ako na magkaroon ng pamasahe sa buong linggo. Hanggang ngayon po, siya pa rin yung nandyan. Papasalamat ako kasi naging part ka ng kung ano ko today. Siya rin yung nagpipilit na magtapos ako ng pag-aaral. Retiring, nalulong po talaga ako. Ang classroom, ang school, ay talagang second family ko na. Kumbaga, tahanan ko na rin yun. Bumabalik sa isipan ko yung ano, yung paano na to. Wala na akong makakausap na estudyante, wala nang magmamano sa akin. Really, I love them. Mas, mahal naman ko talaga ang estudyante ko. fulfillment. Alam mo, may role kang nagawa para sa kanila. Fulfilling talaga, sa totoo lang. Mamimiss ko talaga. Okay. Well, that is uh, a moving commercial from McDonald's. But uh, the lesson is very clear. If we teach for character, if we teach with the character of the students in mind, with their morals, and not just subjects, we will make an impact. We will make a difference. And we do. We do. Really. Let's not underestimate the power of the teacher to impact the lives of the students. Each day, ask yourself, if my student had only my behavior to watch, what example would he catch? Let's go to number three. Know your beliefs and share them. Well, malinaw ang beliefs natin. The values that we have, that we learned from our parents, that we learned from our school, our alma mater, malinaw yun. Kindness, respect, responsibility, hard work. But let us share them. Let us not lose by default because the opposite of what we believe in purity, chastity, modesty, respect. The opposite, yun yung nadidinig nila sa MTVs, sa music, sa videos, television, sa internet. The opposite. I mean, really, ibang klase ang vulgarity that is available for the young people in social media, for example, in television, in telenovelas, in Netflix movies that they can access anytime, in the more than 1 billion videos available in YouTube. Many times, the opposite of our values, yun yung naririnig nilang mensahe. Therefore, if you don't talk about your values, if you don't talk about them, then ang naririnig lang nila is the opposite from MTVs, music, videos, etc. Number four, Use teachable moments. And I mentioned earlier, well, the way you react to situation. Whether positive or negative, ha? alimbawa, nag-champion ng klase mo sa competition, in terms, uh, quiz B, how you react at that moment is a teachable moment. How you're going to show your joy, your happiness, your you can act in a, an arrogant way, in a proud way, or you can be gracious in victory, 
as you would also be gracious in the feet. I mean, pag natalo naman ang team, ang class, again, the same, your reaction at that moment, you are teaching them something. What is the proper way of reacting to situations when you lose a contest, when you win a contest, when you have crisis uh, inside the classroom, when you have problems that you encounter with the headlines of the day? Every moment is a teachable moment. Let's use them. Let's be conscious that every moment we are with the students, we are transmitting to them a certain value. But the opposite is also true. When we are doing something wrong, that wrong example, that bad example is teaching them something. And that may be deformation. Number five, use discipline as moral lesson. Actually, yesterday, we spent a lot of time talking about this and um, bullying, no? uh, the topic on bullying. The, stop going around just looking for people to punish, to give sanctions to, detention, suspension. No, um, every occasion is an opportunity to give moral lesson. You hear a classmate teasing or fighting another classmate. At that moment, don't just punish right away. You tell the person to come. How would you feel if you're the one being teased, being called like that name, being insulted? So what do you think? Do you think you should apologize to the person? Go. So you are giving the person a moral lesson that's disciplining as a moral lesson rather than just going around um, looking for people to punish parang ganun yung wrong mindset ano? and then at all times expect moral behavior i have a strategy for this for example bago ko i-distribute ang test papers sa exam i announce okay class i expect best behavior okay i expect that you will not even think about cheating i expect that you will be honest Okay, if you have any question, you raise your hand, wait for me to go to your desk, don't ask anybody else. Okay, and then I will distribute the test paper. But you already, ex you already made it known that at any moment, at every moment, you expect moral behavior. Number seven, reflecting on the behavior's effects. Like what I mentioned earlier, making them think, how would you feel if you're the one teased? Class, congratulations, we won. How do you think the other class that lost feel right now? Okay, so don't be arrogant. Let us not be braggarts. Let us not be boastful because it's also tough for them. After all, they also gave a good fight. So making people reflect on the effects of their behavior can help them be more conscious of morals and doing the right thing at all times reinforce moral behavior don't just uh, look for wrong things they do if they do something right praise the good deed that is reinforcing moral behavior for example you enter the classroom you notice john picking up trash kahit hindi mo sinabi ah kahit hindi ka nagsabing okay come on please clean the classroom you notice John beginning to clean his area. Reinforce that good behavior by saying, John, good job. I did not tell you to clean, but you are cleaning. Very good. Keep it up. That's the way to do it. Or you reinforce moral behavior online and telling the class, great, everyone is punctual. This is fantastic. This is how it is. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up, students. You are doing a great job reinforcing moral behavior by praising good deeds not the person but the good action is what you are praising that is what you're reinforcing in the end dapat makilala tayo ng mga estudyante as a teacher who prioritizes morals daily who gives importance to morals and finally number 10 we also talked about this yesterday in bullying we said we have to talk about the golden rule. I mean, if you will have to tell the class, class, 
there is only one rule in our classroom, and this is the golden rule. That's a very good thing. Don't do unto others what you would not want others do unto you. Or the opposite, do unto others what you would want others do unto you. We should not stop talking about the golden rule. It continues to be valid and it continues to be a very important one. Okay? You know, I've been talking for one hour and ten minutes. And so, I would like to give uh, everyone a break by showing just two videos. And those who need to go to the washroom can take advantage of this time now to go to the washroom. I think these two, three videos are just... Um, um, I don't know, maybe three, four minutes uh, long. So that's good rest for all of us. And at the same time, for those of you who need to go to the washroom, get your water, then you can do so in this next um, three or four minutes. <laughs> Okay, great. We're back to oops, for a while. Let me just turn off. Um, we're back and we can resume. Um, yes, what I just uh, shared with you, what I just uh, gave you are the um, 10 tips no, of Dr. Michelle Borba on uh, how to raise moral children, moral kids. And we said that's the greatest legacy. We can actually leave behind uh, our children because, and here's a very beautiful quotation from Dr. Michelle Borba, without morals, the young do not learn how to deal with others correctly and appropriately. We have a question that I think I would like to answer now is, uh, Paano kung ang parents mismo ang napaka-grade conscious na para bang grades lang ang mahalaga sa kanila? Tapos kawawa na yung bata, ano? Um, they are pressured and pinapagalitan sila ng parents pag uh, bumaba sa 97, <laughs> na ang kailangan 98, 99, 100 ang grades. Pagka bumaba doon, galit na galit na yung parents, lulusog pa sa eskwelahan minsan, ano? Well, you know, the, we've got to get the parents to be in sync with us. And this is the reason why if you are to be a school of character, because that's what this whole week series of seminars is all about. We want to build schools of character. If you are to be a school of character, you've got to get the parents to be in sync with you. You've got to get them to cooperate and collaborate with you. And therefore, sharing the same uh, vision, um, objectives, and goals. So a school of character will find ways to reach out to the parents, to involve the parents, to also educate the parents about what we are trying to do in our school. That's why importante yung parent-teachers conference, but not just to collect the card, okay? <laughs> Kasi marami akong skwelahang alam, ganyan ang ginagawa nila to get the parents to come by attaching yung card distribution. No, you have to have recollection for parents, talk for parents, presentation for parents. That's why one of the things we are planning for March program is something like this, uh, a seminar organized by the schools, but reaching out to the parents. We've got to reach out to the parents and also tell the parents, parents, you're not just, you should not just be concerned about raising smart kids. 
you should be more concerned about raising good kids. Let's admit it, some of your children talagang hanggang 78 na lang ang kakayanan nila <laughs> sa math, sa English. They're not going to be geniuses in science. But no exemption. We want to see all of them grow up to be good, grow up to be moral, grow up to have respect, responsibility, the fourth and fifth R's. Kanina, in my introduction, I introduced myself as also being the uh, executive director of the Center for the Fourth and Fifth Arts Asia. Well, our principle is every human being, aside from knowing reading, writing, arithmetic, should have respect and responsibility. And parents should also share those same aspirations. Well, most parents really do, except that ngayon, we have some parents whose idea of success is may kotse ka, may bahay ka, mayaman ka. Anything not uh, including that, you're a failure. Of course not. Of course not. And we have to make our parents also share those same values that we have as a school. Kaya mahalaga yung ano, well, I'm going to talk about it on Friday. That's principle number one. Mahalaga yung schools having core values. And the parents who enroll their kids in our school should know that here in our school, these are our core values. Faith, uh, um, patriotism, whatever it is. Pero mahalaga na malinaw sa teachers, parents, students, what you stand for as a school, what your core values are, what your main principles are. What's your mission, vision as a school? Then you stand a better chance of becoming a school of character. Okay, kanina pa tayo nagbabanggit ng character. Men of character, women of character. Well, ano ba ibig sabihin ng pagiging good character or having good character? Let us look at the classical writers. St. Thomas, Aquinas, Plato, Aristotle, um, Augustine. Ano ang sinabi nila tungkol sa pagiging person of character? They gave ten essential virtues. Let's take a look at them. Sabi nila, ito raw ang sampung core essential values if a person is going to grow up to be a man or woman of character. May wisdom dapat. Good judgment. May justice dapat. Which is what the golden rule is all about. Do unto others what you would want others do unto you. And don't do unto others. That's justice. What you would not want others do unto you. Fortitude. Strength of character. Inner toughness. Na kaya nilang labanan ang assault of the environment, of the violence in media, of pornography, of hedonism, of materialism, inner toughness. They can control themselves. They will be in control. Self-control. Kaya nga sabi natin kanina, technology is here to stay. What we need to do is to make sure this kid is in control of technology and not the other way around. Love. Positive attitude. Hard work, integrity, gratitude, humility. So, sabi ng classical writers, ito raw ang sampung um, essential virtues. If a person is to consider himself or herself a man or woman of character. Sampu yan, tamang tama. We have 10 months with the students. We can divide the 10 months into 10 virtues. June. Wisdom ang ating virtue of the month. Uh, July, justice ang ating virtue of the month. Or you can look at your core values and then divide it throughout the 10 months. And then, siguro in some schools, apat ang core values for the four quarters. Which doesn't necessarily coincide with grading period. Kasi some schools are trimestral. Okay, but you have four core values. No problem. But 
let's divide the whole year into four of those core values. So, things like that. No? Pero ang importante is we are concerned about this. And now that we know what it means to be a man or woman of character, we need to model this 10. Administrators should be thinking, therefore, how can my teachers grow in wisdom, grow in justice, grow in fortitude? What talks can I give them? What recollection topics should they get? Um, what topics of the talks should the priest give in the next recollection so that we are able to cover all these, etc.? Okay, more strategies. Introduce the young people to appropriate role models. And kahit anong subject ang tinuturuan mo, there are role models to speak of. Scientists who failed in experiments but did not give up. That's being a role model. I mean, um, Thomas Edison failed more than a thousand times bago niya na discovery yung light bulb. That's appropriate role model, not giving up, <coughs> perseverance, strength in character. Uh, mathematicians or philosophers or characters in literature. Many of them are appropriate role models that the teacher can present as, you see, a good example for the students. Kasi kung hindi, ang, kanil, ang kanilang iniidulo ang kanilang tinitingala. Sabi ng research ng Makan Erickson, ang mga kabataan daw sa Pilipinas, they look up to celebrities and athletes. Yun daw ang kanilang iniidulo. Celebrities. Like uh, Vice Ganda, who is very rich and uh, has a lot of money and very popular and very famous. Every movie he makes becomes a blockbuster. But I don't think that person is an appropriate role model for the young people. Pero, yun ang kanilang tinitingala. Basketball players, PBA players, some of them get into scandals. Um, video scandals nila na kumalat. That, I don't think that's being an appropriate role model. We've got to introduce the young people to appropriate role models. Kung hindi, talo tayo ng celebrities and athletes. And then, direct and indirect instruction. Okay, uh, let me share with you some strategies now from some specific books. Tomorrow, especially, Dr. Harry K. Wong is going to be the main source of the presentation on better classroom management. Once and for all, you can solve that discipline problem. And there are many strategies in that book that also teach character. But... The biggest uh, source of our strategies now is going to be Rafe Esquith, Teach Like Your Hair is on Fire. He has been a teacher for 28 years in a poor community in Los Angeles, where in that school, Hobart's Elementary School, majority of the students end up failed, kicked out, or even jailed, except, except all the students who passed through his grade 5 classroom grade 5 classroom. How does he do it? He teaches for character. And I'm going to share some of those strategies which he talked about in his book, Teach Like Your Hair is on Fire. We're going to look at many of those strategies. And of course, Hal Urban that I brought to the Philippines three times already in his book, Lessons on the Classroom, 20 Things Good Teachers Do. Okay, let's talk about uh, Rafe Esquith, sabi ni Rafe, if you're going to teach for character, make sure you teach the young people delayed gratification. Okay? Delayed gratification. Anything at all that can develop the young people in delayed gratification, you are forming their character, you are preparing them for a successful life. So, uh, he has a number of strategies to form or to develop delayed gratification among his students. For example, he said, talk to the students about the two marshmallow kids experiment. 
you remember this experiment? Kids were put in a room, one-way mirror. Hindi nila alam ino observe sila. And the kids were given two marshmallows each. Tapos sabi sa kanila ng adult, okay kids, everybody gets two marshmallows. I'm going to leave you now. I'm going to leave you for a few minutes. If you don't eat those two marshmallows, when I come back, I'm going to give you two more. Okay? But if you've eaten it already, when I come back, sorry, you don't get any. And then the adult leaves the room. And as soon as the adult leaves the room, some of the kids, walang delayed gratification, will eat the marshmallows. Walang self-control. Walang temperance. Kakainin yung marshmallows. Some of them will try their best. May pa kurut-kurut muna sa marshmallow, konting-konti lang before they finally eat it. Some others have delayed gratification because they want two more. They want to be able to get two more marshmallows that they like so much. So, delayed gratification. They will not eat it. And even better, some of them will resort to strategies so that they don't get tempted by the marshmallow. They will not look at it. They will turn their back and look at the uh, look the other way, so that they are not. Um, Mute lang muna natin po ang inyong microphone, ayan, para the others don't get disturbed. So some uh, have delayed gratification. Now that's not the end of the experiment yet. This is what the researchers did. They followed the life of these kids. Those with delayed gratification, 15 years later, they will follow their lives. 15 years later, they will discover those with delayed gratification, with self-control, with temperance, are high achievers and highly successful and above average performers. Pero yung mga walang delayed gratification, walang self-control, walang temperance, were below performers um, were some of them were even failures and were not successful. They repeated that experiment to different kids with different backgrounds, with different um, uh, upbringing, with different economic backgrounds of the families, but the results always showed the same thing. Delayed gratification is um, proportional to the success of the students. And so the students should know that they have to develop their delayed gratification, self-control, temperance, if they are to be successful. Talk about it. Talk about the marshmallow kids with the students so that they understand the importance of delayed gratification. And then make them do works, projects, sit works, homework, that will develop delayed gratification in them. For example, modeling or rug project. Alam niyo yung modeling. Uh, dioramas. Making a diorama of the turn of the century Philippine society. Philippine um, plaza, church, and uh, marketplace. Making them do dioramas is delayed gratification. Hindi pwedeng mamadaliin yan. They have to carefully glue tiny little pieces, tiny little bricks to form the diorama. Chemistry, making those uh, models. Um, you see, practically any subject you have, you can make them do modeling or rug project, social studies. You will make the students do a map of the Philippines uh, through a rug that they will design, that they will you know, they have to make sure they put the right colors in the right place, in the right box. That's delayed gratification. Hindi pwedeng mamadaliin yan. Or board games. They discovered that making the students play chess, for example, is a good way to develop delayed gratification. Hindi po pwedeng mamadaliin yan. You have to study very carefully every move you make. You have to think of the strategy of the person you're playing with. You have to wait for your turn. You cannot hurry. 
may time limit yan and you have to respect that time limit. That's delayed gratification. Not to mention, of course, strateg strategizing. Yan. Making strategies is a good form of um, developing uh, delayed gratification. Here's another one, jigsaw puzzles. Especially yung jigsaw puzzles with 1,000 tiny little pieces that you put together in the right places. You have to study every piece and make sure you put it in the right place to be able to form the puzzle. Delayed gratification yan. Hindi pwedeng mamadaliin. Every piece has to be studied carefully, has to be considered delayed gratification. So anything we teachers get the students to do that will develop delayed gratification is preparing them for a successful life. Not just to pass a test, not just to pass a quiz, but especially to develop in them something that they will need for the rest of their life, delayed gratification. Here is the best way to teach delayed gratification, gardening, which I know in some schools, tinanggal na sa curriculum. And yet, sabi ni Rafe Esquith, it's one of the best ways to teach students environmental intelligence, care for the environment, and at the same time, delayed gratification. Hindi pwedeng mamadaliin ang pagtanim. Hindi pwedeng paglagay mo ng monggo seed para madali, ihilahin mo, lumabas yung dahon. No, you have to wait. And you have to let nature take its course. Delayed gratification. So, and there are many more strategies. Anything that will develop delayed gratification among the students, we are preparing them for success in life. Math teachers among you, Rafe Esquith said, you are in a position to teach kids one of the most important skills, problem solving skill. And in math, you do problem solvings. That's why he even um, recommends this website, mathstories.com, which contains many, many math problems that will help develop in the young people the skill of solving problems, the skill of analyzing, evaluating, judging, and then using formulas, mathstories.com. In the case of Rafe Esquith, um, he would make himself a big... Yung classroom ni Dave Esquith is a self-contained classroom. He is the only teacher from morning to afternoon, from the first period to the last period. You know, the bell rings at 7.30 a.m. Pero ang students ni Rafe are there at 6 a.m. excited to do math and English drills. Wow, how does he do that? Well, it's because of his economic system, which is not part of the strategies I'm going to discuss with you. That's for tomorrow's classroom management uh, talk presentation. The economic system in the classroom of Rafe Esquith. But that's a strategy to get them to want to be there by 6, 6 a.m. The bell rings at 3.30 for dismissal. Pero ang students ni Rafe Esquith are there up to 6 every day, 6 p.m. every day, to rehearse for the Shakespeare play every day until the last day of the school year when they will present that play. And then that play gets invited. They get invited to present it all over the United States. How does he do it? Well, that's for tomorrow's economic system of Rafe Esquith's classroom. But another thing he does is he makes himself available for the students during lunch and recess for those who want to learn from him how to play the guitar or how to play the keyboard. He makes himself available for those who want to learn how to play the guitar and how to play the keyboard. And by the end of grade five, lahat ng estudyante niya know how to play the guitar or the keyboard or both. Kaya life-changing talaga para sa kanila, no? Itong grade 5 with Rafe Esquith. That's lunch, recess alternative. Here's another strategy from Rafe. 
Make the Students Read the Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Yung bang kahit na fourth year high school, grade 12, kahit college, kahit professional eh. Ngayon, basahin mo itong libro. There are many life lessons you can pick up from the book. The life lessons on what is essential is invisible to the eyes. It's only through the heart that one can see rightly. Friendship cannot be bought in any store. These are all life, life uh, stories, life lessons that anyone who reads The Little Prince can get from. So that's a strategy of Rafe. Make the students read The Little Prince. Not as a requirement, but as um, literature to help them grow as a person. And then yung play, theater niya, teaching them or practicing for a Shakespeare play, it's more than just to be able to present a play, to be able to stage a play. It's especially geared towards developing, developing among the students, camaraderie, friendship, sense of responsibility. You cannot forget your lines. You cannot forget your lines. Otherwise, the whole play will collapse. If you, in the middle of the play, bigla kang nakatulala and you don't remember your next line, it going, it's going to ruin the whole. So, um, play, practicing for the theater, is a good way to develop in them a sense of responsibility, sense of community, sense of camaraderie and friendship, and working as a team. You are not alone. You need the other uh, characters doing their part as well. But it's also a great way to teach delayed gratification. Hindi pwedeng mamadaliin yun. You have to rehearse day after day. Now, let's memorize all the lines. Now, let's memorize the blocking, the positioning, the um, acting, the um, action on stage. Delayed gratification. Okay, so those are ideas from Rafe, and there are many more, but we are not going to have the time to tackle all of them. In fact, look at this list here. I will not also be able to tackle all of them. Some of them I described yesterday when we talked about bully prevention through character formation. Some of them are appropriate for tomorrow's classroom management session, disciplining the classroom. But just looking at the title, you can get ideas. I, oh, nga, ano, I can help my students. The class can become a school of uh, a class of character if we have these things. No. Okay, so I will not even tackle them now because there are many more. Here are some more concrete strategies. We're um, winding down. These are the last few ideas I want to share with you. Good Deeds Bowl is a strategy, for example. Instead of looking out for people to punish, Good Deeds Bowl means you have to try to catch students doing good deeds. Okay, class, I have here a bowl, okay? And every time I catch any, any one of you doing a good deed, I'm going to put inside the bowl a ping pong ball, if you have many ping pong balls, a pebble that you just collect from the street, or even just a paper that you form into a ball. For example, Joanna, I saw you helping your classmate in, her, in his assignment. Very good. <clears throat> that's kindness. That's a good deed. You have made the class win a pebble or a uh, ball of paper or a um, a marble yeah some teachers would use marble and i'm going to put it in the good deeds bowl john you have been cooperative reciting fantastic you have been doing a good deed because of that you have made the class uh, merit a marble in our good deeds bowl and the objective is to catch as many of these good deeds that when you fill up the bowl with the good deeds, the class is up for a class reward. You deserve a reward, whether it is on Tuesday because of the 
uh, good deeds bowl that you filled up we're going to watch a good video that is related to our lesson but uh, it's almost like a free time for us because we are going to watch a movie together a video together or whatever reward it is we're going to have 30 minutes of free time meaning to say i'm going to give you a time to do whatever you like whether it is to read a book to chat with your friend but you have to make sure we don't disturb the other classroom but the class deserves a reward diba um that's fantastic when your students when your students start trying to outdo each other doing good deeds I love a class like that where students are doing a lot of good deeds that I they want me to catch so that we fill up the bowl with the good deeds. It may take some class one week to fill up the good deeds bowl. Some class maybe they need the whole month. But once they start thinking of the reward, then they will encourage each other, "Oi, come on. Do good deeds naman para we can fill up the bowl." The, I love a class like that. In other words, um, the reward system of not just rewarding individuals, but a whole class. The whole class will merit it. That's fantastic. I love a class that is trying to outdo each other in doing good deeds, in filling up the good deeds bowl. In, in other words, like what we described yesterday, your objective is to be able to create a class culture, a class identity. Your students will start thinking, I belong to this class where we value good deeds, where good deeds are rewarded, where kindness is noticed, is um, um, strengthened, it is fortified because the teacher comments about it you start creating a class culture, a class identity. Trophy technique. I love this. It happened. You can, well, the thing is you do it usually inside the classroom. But, you know, for online classes, this can also be done if you can make sure that your students are arranged according to a fixed row. You know, that whenever they go online, they always occupy the same rows. So this is how it works. Okay, class, this week. No? Um, this week, the row that recited the most, that participated the most, that did the best in all the quizzes I gave, and therefore the trophy this week belongs to the row, is row number one. Yeah. And then row one celebrates, right? And row two, three, four now will think, I we have to get that trophy next week. So you will announce, let's see whose row this trophy will belong to. The trophy doesn't have to be literally a trophy. It can be a certificate. It can be written on the board. The trophy this week belongs to row two. Or if you can afford it, why not? A literally... Um, trophy that you display and it is situated in that row for this week because they own it for this week. So, ganun. Um, I love a classroom where rows are competing with each other in doing good, in trying to be the best in uh, the quizzes, in the recitation, in their cooperation, in their, even in their orderliness because you can include that in the criteria. This week, the road that was always aligned, clean, no trash on the floor, orderly, recited the most, did, uh, doing very well in the quizzes, is row number two or five or whatever it is. Better yet, you tell them to give their row a name. Uh, the brave uh, row five warriors. The courageous row two um optimists like that no something that is positive virtuous or um 
something that gives off a good vibe. That's the trophy technique. And it works. I've done it. I've done it many times with my students in grade four, grade five, even all the way to high school. I love a class where, where students are doing, trying to outdo each other in doing good and rows trying to outdo each other in doing good. Yesterday, I talked about Hal Urban's strategies. The most important thing he did as a teacher, he learned on the last day of his first year as a teacher, okay? On his last day of his first year as a teacher, here came a girl submitting her final exam paper. And then Hal Urban realized, wait, I don't remember talking to this girl in the whole year we were together inside the classroom. I don't even remember how her voice sounds like. Maybe I don't even remember well her name. And that moment, Hal Urban felt so bad, so very bad, that 10 months together inside the classroom, and he did not deal with this girl as a real human being. She was just a class number. She was just another face in the crowd. So at that moment, Hal Urban made a resolution. As a teacher, every single day, I am going to welcome my students inside the classroom with a handshake. He made it as a policy, as a habit. He will welcome every single one of his students inside his classroom with a handshake from that moment on. And he would do that for the next 20 years. Now, some of us may think that's a waste of time. No, because 20 years later, he would meet some of his former students and that is what they would remember of Hal Urban, the teacher who treated them with kindness as a human being, the teacher who welcomed them inside his classroom every single day with respect as a human being. It left a mark on all his students. So that is important. The handshake, that has strategy, the, because it's true. Never let the demands of your job cause you to forget that each one of your students is a feeling, thinking human being. For education to be effective, it must be personal. And John Dewey said, the deepest urge in human nature is the desire to be important. Okay? So that's a strategy from Hal Urban. In the Philippines, some of you may be thinking handshake is not appropriate. Okay, maybe some would prefer a high five. Some would prefer a fist bump. Some in his class would prefer a hug because they never get a hug at home. Whatever it is. Maybe in the Philippines, some of them would prefer a manopo. Okay, now some of you may be thinking, Sir, I have 50 students in my classroom shaking their hands. That's a lot of time. Okay, well, maybe for you to start, before you start talking and lecturing, you will do eye contact with everyone inside the classroom first as a way of greeting them. Okay, but make sure you treat every single one with respect as a human being, because the deepest urge in human nature is the desire to be important. Okay, well, you know, I didn't get to finish all the strategies in the slides, but don't worry, you will get the complete slides. You can download it as I have been uh, announcing the past days from the Facebook page, okay? Um, because we have reached the end of our session today. But of course, before I end, I need to again remind you about um, certain things. Number one, uh, you should get your certificate. But for you to be able to get your certificate, you need to email uh, the name as you want it to appear in the certificate. And then please put the title of the talk that you attended because uh, even up to today, I'm still receiving requests for certificates of the Monday <laughs> uh, session. 
so that we don't get confused about which certificate to send to you, then please write the name that you want to appear in the certificate and then the title of the session that you are asking for a certificate for because not all participants need the certificate. Okay, name and title of the seminar, uh, send it to catalystpds at gmail.com. <clears throat> um, better yet, if you indicate there, requesting for a certificate name and then title of the seminar okay and then give us a few well uh, what is happening now is we only need a few hours and you receive your certificate by email uh, but originally i was announcing give us a few days because um, it may take time for us to put things together what we are trying to do is to get right away the certificate to you and then this presentation the powerpoint as well as the video of this talk, because I notice one, two uh, disappearing from the screen, you know, because maybe your Wi-Fi becomes um, weak. No problem. You can access the video of this presentation. It will be posted in this same Facebook page. If you are not yet in this group, please look for us in Facebook and join it or ask a friend of yours to join it so that he or she can download for you all the handouts, the PowerPoint presentations, many fantastic reading materials that I make available there in the Facebook group. Okay, so the, that's the name of the page, facebook.com slash groups slash schools of character. And then um, just give us a bit of time to accept you. Once you are part of the group, you can download access. Tomorrow, I'm going to tackle better classroom management, a lot of strategies from Dr. Harry K. Wong and also from Rafe Esquith. And then on Friday, creating a school of character. And yeah, you can still join. The registration is still open for these two others, um, to these two other seminars. And as I mentioned at the start of the talk, I hope you uh, take advantage Dr. Michelle Borba's sessions on raising mentally healthy kids during troubled times. Okay, it's an international conference. So that's the, the certificate participants will receive will indicate international seminar. I think uh, the regular rate for this is uh, 500 for one day and 900 if you register for the two days. But before the end of February, if you register, there's, I think, 200 peso discount. It's just something like 300 for one day and uh, 600 for two days registration. And Dr. Barba is one of the best speakers I've ever brought to the Philippines. It's fantastic. Sorry um, if we have gone over time. And uh, I thank you again for joining me. Today, we now come to the mandatory pictorials, okay? Uh, so I, may I request you to kindly please turn on your videos as I take screenshots of four pages. We are uh, 85, 87, or now 82. Three have already left the group, no problem. I'm going to take a screenshot of the participants so please give your biggest, sweetest, uh, fakest smile in one, two, and three. That's page one. Let's go to page two. Please give your smile in one, two, and three. Page three now. Turn on your video. And with your sweetest, fakest smile. <laughs> And finally, page four in three, two, and, uh, sorry, uh, nauna, three, <laughs> two, and one. Great. Okay. I have been able to take a picture of everyone. So from all over the Philippines, from Lingayen, from Dagupan, from Davao, from Manila, from Pasig, from Quezon City, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, we sir. Have... Thank you. Welcome. We have from... Uh... Thank you, sir. Uh, San Carlos, no? Oh, no. Oh, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope to see you again in our other future seminars, and we will post those announcements in the same Facebook page. So, great. Thank you. I will end this meeting in five, four. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Stay safe. Three. God bless, two, sir. God bless everyone. And one.